Alright, let's rock and roll. Anyway, a very pleasant Sabbath. We are extremely, I guess, late, you'd call it, but better late than never. I think that this is a better time for us in terms of not rushing our lives out as we normally do. But I intend to tell you that God is good. Happy Sabbath to each and every one of you. Happy, Happy Sabbath, Sabbath. Michelle. How are you Happy doing, Maureen? I'm great. God is good. I'm good. alive. I'm alive. Good. I'm alive. So long as I'm alive, I'm good. I'm in a good place because I'm in the hands of the Lord. <laughs> good to be in the land of the living. It so is. So good. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And there's so many things happening all around us. But we have peace. Amen. We have peace Amen. Amen. Because we love the Lord and He's blessed us. I was just talking to Marlene before we got on about the many blessings that God has bestowed on us. He's bestowed the Sabbath. He's also bestowed the health message. I said, Marlene, had it been for the health message, literally, I said, people don't appreciate it that God has blessed us with good health mm -hmm. or also the, this health message, this lifestyle that we live. You know, yes. and as I even look, I'm looking, I'm saying, man, I had a call last night and the friend said, Michelle, you look the same way I saw you 10 years ago. You haven't changed. And I have to say it is the health message. Amen. But I recognize that it's the health. It, it is yeah. the health message. That yeah, well, you know, when we have to realize that the health message is the right arm of the gospel. And when we realize that, I think we'll, we'll stop separating it. Um, separating? Be separated from, yeah, it's a disservice to the humanity and it's a way of really helping mankind. It's, yeah, yeah. people are suffering, people are suffering from all kinds of ailments, whether it be yeah. physical, mental, spiritual. People are suffering and they're looking for healing. And so, we just simply need to ask the Lord to, um, you know, to help us on this journey. And so God is good. He's an amazing God. And um, he's an amazing God. And we just thank him for the yes. message. Yes. And we are just his humble servants wishing to share with each of you how we can restore our health, how we can yes. come back to being whole again. Because indeed, this is God's body. And he wants us to be whole again. Amen? Marley, and I need mean, to... Yes. We need to clarify to any of our listening audience, whenever mm -hmm. we come, you cannot separate God's Sabbath from his health message. Mm -hmm. And whenever we come to give this message, we are teaching God's word. Amen. And also, we are on YouTube, but we are not monetized. No. You have a choice. No, you have a choice. A every, video, every video that comes up, we have a choice whether to monetize it or not. I'm just educating people who do not know because you may not yeah. have a YouTube channel. 
So we don't make one single penny. This is mm -hmm. this is God's work we're doing. This is missionary this is, work. We're not making all. a dollar. And trust me, I am a food blogger for 12 years. Is YouTube is not all that. People don't make money on YouTube. The majority <laughs> probably a one percent so when you see people having youtube channels don't think they're making a ton of money it's only very few so don't even no money to make like that i am a professional yeah. food blogger. i make my living from my website i don't make it from youtube so don't think that we're here we're here to make money we're giving back we're doing god's work and guess what god does not shut down on the sabbath in the sense of People need to hear his message on the Sabbath. And if you mm -hmm. want to go to church, if you're legalistic and you only go to church, sometimes you need to stop listening to sermons and go out there and go teach people in the community. What are you doing on Sabbath? Just going there? The fact there. is the church is not the four walls. Exactly. It's not, it's not the four walls. Yeah. Exactly. We need to yeah. change our mindset. Yeah. We're doing ministry. We're doing ministry right here. So we just, you just, someone, just someone one, one of my followers on my WhatsApp, you know, I usually send the, I don't know, my chat that I'm on. And some of the followers are like, oh, you must be making lots of money from YouTube. I said, <gasps> wow, I'm so excited to know. I said, where's the chat? I said, as far as I can see, I think I've been on YouTube. I don't know how many years. And I think I, I have a, a check maybe of a dollar and 10 cents. Oh, wow. You wow. know, so there's no money. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Can, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't judge, you know, don't think that people are we're here, it's Sabbath, we're here ministering. We're talking about health. You cannot separate health from the gospel. It is part of the gospel, guys. It is. And people need to hear there are people suffering, they're dying. And God, Jesus healed when he was on this earth, he came to heal. You think I can go there preaching to somebody who is sick? Sometimes they need that healing. They need to be made whole so that they can accept the message of salvation. Amen. They Amen. need to be made whole. So Fact sometimes, is, but if somebody's in pain, they can't even hear you. They can't even hear you. They can't even hear you, bye baby. You can't even hear you. They can't hear you. They are. They're they're in pain. They're suffering. Yes. You know. Yes. Marlene, you're going I in know. and out. I'm saying yeah. bye to my little grand okay. saying bye, Marlene. I'm telling yeah. her bye. She's gone to church. Little four, three year old gone to church. Yeah. And she's like, see you later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So pray for me. I'm going to church too, but I'm late. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But thank you so much for joining us this morning. We are late in terms of our start, but we thank you for joining. Will you do us a favor and become a digital disciple even now and share the live? Let's up those yes. numbers. Let's increase those numbers. And you know what? At any time they choose to watch it, it's up there. They can watch it. They can view it. They can benefit from the program, the information. Lisa, we have a condolences Lisa. out to you and your family. We you lost your mother-in-law and yeah. we say oh, we are for you. So God's richest blessings on your family at this time. We're very sad to learn about the passing of Sister Dorset. Many of you here in the Bahamas will know her. So if Lisa, if you can give me her first name again, I can share with the um, listening audience, those of us yeah. who may know her here in the Bahamas, they can definitely um, send their you know, condolences to you and your family at this time. For those who may know Desmond, Derek, and David, um, this is their mom. She passed last evening, just yeah. before sunset. She went to rest in Jesus. And so we are praying for the family, but we know that we'll see her again. We need to be faithful yeah. until we meet yeah. her again in the kingdom. So Lisa, we thank you for always being a part of our audience. Um, Jan, happy Sabbath. Same to happy you. God Sabbath. bless you. Hope you're well. Jan is one of those people who make sure, are y'all coming on? What's going on? You know? <laughs> Well, thank, thank you. God. Jan is like, Where y'all at? I, don't, I can't find y'all. Oh, you know? thank, thank you so much, Jan, for being that person. We thank you, Joanne. Joanne's uh, my my VIP. Is it okay that I call her the VIP? Her and Janice, you know, all of your VIPs, you're all special. And yes. we are thankful for her watching here from the Bahamas. Verna, my next VIP, Lisa, Jan, all your VIPs, thank you so much for joining this morning. We have a very important topic. I remember, Michelle, just a few months now, I've been going through allergies, lots of allergies. And my body's been responding in ways I've never imagined. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally, 
I'm having blurred vision. I'm having all these crazy symptoms going on. And I'm like, something's wrong with me. I've been to the doctor. She said, Marlene, there's nothing wrong with you. I'm having all these weird things happening that I've never had in my life, you know, and itching in my mouth and the throat. And I'm like, something's not right. And so, you know, you do all these blood tests and they're like, well, we don't see anything. The only next test we could probably do is maybe an allergy test. And when right. I started researching on allergies, it was amazing to find the amount of foods that I could be allergic to. Mm. And I'm plant-based. I've been plant-based for such a long time. Um, but, you know, from time to time, we take things like antibiotics. You know, if you have a tooth decay or toothache or whatever. And I had to do that last year. I had to do some. And I'm thinking a lot of these uh, antibiotics, it kind of triggers a lot of things. It throws your body out of whack. The gut gets torn up. And so I'm just like fighting to not have more allergies. So I have eliminated a lot of stuff out of my diet. And we're going to go on to talking about how to test and how to prove and what to do. And I remember also a very crazy time when we, as Michelle and I went, we took our children to do a medical missionary training in um, Alabama. 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 It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't seal. It was uh, Iron City, eh? Yeah, I, I, you see the Alabama, it was right on the board of Alabama. Yes, right. So, and do you, do you remember Theo? Remember Theo woke up one morning and he had, his lips were like totally swollen, his eyes. And I was like, oh, what happened to you overnight? Went to the hospital. They told him you're allergic to nuts. I had never seen anything like that. Theo from Canada. Yeah. Isn't that where they were yes, from? Canada? I remember. Yeah. So, you know, we, our bodies respond in different ways to allergies. And so it's you. We we are made so unique. We're made in such a beautiful way. God just yes. fashioned us and molded us just how He would have us. And I'm telling you guys, this topic today, you're gonna be surprised to know how you may have been affected by the foods you're eating. You know. Yes. So let's stay tuned. Let's learn about this body, this beautiful temple God has given us. God is so beautiful Amen. in designing us in such a beautiful and unique way. We are the only mammal that can talk. And can laugh and can can react and and love, right? So I just love it. We have our brother Boniface saying good morning. Good morning. Happy good morning. Thank you, Boniface, for being a part of our family. One day, Michelle and I will get to Rwanda. I promise you. Yes. I'm really asking God to get me there to by Rwanda. God's I, by God's grace, I'd love to visit. Until then, though, we are there virtually. Amen. Because we believe Amen. in family, Amen. Anything, Amen. anything. 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 Our scripture reading this morning, I put two or three of them in there because I'm telling you, allergies have me thinking way out of the box that we've been in for so long. So I was like, you know, I was afraid. Michelle, I was afraid as I started going through the allergies. Yeah. I was afraid. And I was, I would tell Michelle, I said, Michelle, something's weird is happening. And she's like, well, let's let's start doing process of elimination and doing all these different things. They're testing this and testing that. And my dog's like, Marlene, there's nothing wrong with you. I'm like, yes, there is. And we're arguing back and forth. Because she can see the results. And I'm looking like, I'm the one. But I was afraid. But the Bible says in Isaiah 41 and 10, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help you. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. So God just gave me that reassurance. And that peace that passes all understanding. I promise you, God is an awesome and an amazing God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, with by prayer and supplication, we should make our request known to God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Amen. Just say amen. 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 So food allergies, there are so many of them. Look at the foods that we have on our screen. Hi, Angelique, how you doing? Look at the uh, foods we have on our screen. And you would note that these are foods that are common to us, aren't they? You eat some, some of them. I love peanuts. Matter of fact, I just made a peanut peanut um porridge. Oh, my goodness, I love peanuts. The peanuts don't love me. I'm so, I'm so upset, right? I love nuts, and I'm okay with the nuts. Praise God, hallelujah, because I don't know what I would do. Fish. I had a friend that called me at midnight, at midnight, yeah. dying because of fish poisoning. Literally, he spent a week in the hospital, mm. dying, literally. Blood pressure pivot just dropped. Mm. Diarrhea, vomiting, fish poisoning. 
It's very common. Shellfish, very common. I have a friend who who says my throat closes up if I get fish um shellfish poisoning. Shellfish. Eggs, Shrimp. milk, dairy products, wheat. These are some of the things that we and wheat is like one of the most common, isn't it? It's most common. So yeah. share this live. Come on, share the live. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Share some thumbs up. Thank Send us your questions. We will answer your questions at the end of our broadcast or as we go along if it has to do with the slides that we are sharing. So we need you. You're a part of our community, right? You think everyone else is sharing, but they ain't shared yet. So you do your job in sharing it. That's your job today. We are doing our job, your job. Press the share button. Thank you so much. And send some love. We need that too. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Michelle. So when does allergy occur? An allergy occurs when the immune system mistakenly identifies a harmless food protein as harmful and launches an attack against it. This can lead to various symptoms ranging from mild itching to life-threatening anaphylaxis. Mm. Unfortunately, many people don't even realize that they have food allergy until mm. they experience these severe reactions. So mm. think about it. The itchy throat, the mouth itching after you eat pineapple, those are all signs of food allergies. And people will just ignore it, go on, keep we ignore it, and then we continue enjoying the food. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I, I can't think of anyone who's not allergic to the pineapple, though. Something's up with the pineapple. Maybe it's my just mouth. Spray. My mouth itches. The throat itches. But I'm not allergic to one in the tin. Why not? And and my brother is not allergic to the organic one. Mm. So if he buys organic pineapple, mm -hmm. he's fine. If he eats regular, okay. that thing tears him up. Really? So, okay, so I must try the organic one. one. I'll try. Very I'll try properly. They're okay. heavily sprayed. Okay. So I wash mine. I scrub mine. If I don't buy mm -hmm. organic, I scrub mm -hmm. mine really. Mm -hmm. I wash soap and water. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'll, I I just choose not to buy because I know that it's going to cause me such grief. I use yes. the one from the tin because I use the crushed one in order to make a chia pudding, which I love. No but I'm telling you, I. I just stay away from it because I don't like the I don't like the feeling of the yeah. mouth. Anybody else here experiences that with um with pineapple? Let I us know. Yeah. Let me know some of the foods you're allergic to. How about it? Yeah. Put it in the yeah. chat. Some of the foods you're allergic to, and then tell us some of the ways you how you know that you are. Did you do a blood test? Did you do right. a food um analysis? Yeah. Did you pull yeah. foods? Yes. Yeah. Let us know. So what is a food allergy? A food allergy is when your body has an adverse reaction to a specific food for or ingredient. Um, and so this can range from a mild reaction, such as itchy mouth, like I have sometimes with eating even banana, imagine, or peanut what? butter. Yes. <laughs> or hives. Some people break out in hives. My grandson has it all over his face, or oh, poor thing. Uh, mm -hmm. He has such allergies. Everything mama eats, he gets, and he's breaking out. Yeah. Um, so, or you can have a severe reaction. Difficulty breathing, that's severe. Swelling of the throat, that's severe. So mm -hmm. this is just a way of knowing that you may have an allergy. Yeah. So do you want to come continue or me? Sure. So, so there are two types. Yeah. You know, there are two types of reactions that can occur. You can have an immediate reaction. Like for me, last week Friday, I had an immediate reaction to a food that I love so much. I won't even tell you the food because I don't want to put a bad note. It just <laughs> 20 minutes. In 20 minutes, my stomach started cramping and I had pain until I started mm. drinking charcoal. And I had to drink copious amounts of charcoal, then eventually just went away. So I know that I can't have that food again. So it was mm. immediate. Sometimes it's delayed. My friend, mm. his home was delayed. It was like three, four hours later. Why he called me at midnight, he said, Come, I need help. But he wasn't even on the phone. He was he was dying. He was like, oh, and his son had to call and say, Miss Marlene, my dad's not feeling well. Will you please come? I said, It's midnight. You know, when that friend calls you at midnight, you know, the Bible actually talks about it. Came to life for me. You know, the whole scripture reading yeah. about the friend that calls at midnight. Right. And I had just been studying that scripture in preparation for a sermon. I was like, God, what are you what are they doing? He tests at midnight to call me. I'm like, no. And I said, I'll come. He says, You'll come, thank you. But I'm telling you, so it could be immediate or it could be delayed. And so immediate actions usually happen within minutes to hours after eating. So I guess this one was immediate. Um, the offending food can be and can be life-threatening. Delayed reactions usually happens hours to days after the food is eaten. 
or yeah. often less severe. So you have to now start identifying because yeah. most times I my doctor was Kirk Kummer. Anybody here Kirk Kummer as a doctor? Dr. Kummer would always say, What did you eat? That would always be the first question when you go to the doctor. I said, But my stomach's hurt, my head, what did you eat? Isn't it amazing? Is it not amazing? Right. I find it amazing that mm -hmm. we link our bad feelings to what we ate. We bring it together. Yet, we continue eating those bad foods. We Constantly. know we are depressed. Come on, man. Wow. People, wow. get with the program, like my friend Oprah Winfrey would say. Get in tune, too, with your body. Like, you should know yes. as soon as there's a reaction. What did you eat? What did you eat? Yes. We've got to get with the program. Yes. Hi, Monica. How you doing? Monica. Happy Sabbath. That's my cousin. Hold she on. Just sharing completely. Wait, what's that? What did she say? Hand pink waving. Hand pink waving. Monica, tell me what's hand. <laughs> I don't know. Hold on. I'm just sharing on my, I think I did already. Good. Okay. Um, Monica says hand pink waving. Is she hand waving? She's probably just hand waving. <laughs> we'll do back. <laughs> Happy Sabbath, Linda. Happy Sabbath, Benoit says interesting. Boy, I'm not getting that work. That's not Benoit. That's Busabi. <laughs> I Grace, love this about Gunka. Linda says happy Sabbath. Grace says thanks, son. She's sharing the program. Thank you, Grace. Let's see those numbers increase. Let's do it. Come on. Thank you got you. it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, understanding. We are understanding. Thank you so much. So this food allergy thing is real. It's real. Right. It's real. So it's tell real. us some of the food that you may be allergic to. I'm waiting. Yes, let me please. Just Yes. And let me know how you know for real that you are allergic. Come on. Come on. Type yes. in the chat. Let Monica, us know. Well, yeah. What Monica said? That Kirk Culmer was her doctor as well. And oh, Hunting Baby. Yeah, man. That's my doc, girl. That's my doc. That's yeah. my doc, girl. Yes, <laughs> ma'am. Oh. He was. Oh, she said two hand. <laughs> okay. Hi, Dr. Persephone. How are you doing this morning? Good morning. Happy to see you. I haven't Good heard from morning. you in a while. We'll catch up hopefully soon. So let's continue on common food allergens. So allergens may vary from person to person, but they are mostly associated with foods that contain proteins. Isn't that interesting? Among yeah. other compounds. So that's oh. why I think we're going to do the nuts. I could start with the nuts, the peanuts, the almonds the walnuts, so the nuts, because they have this particular proteins and the, the body has allergic reactions to it. Like groundnuts, which is also peanuts and tree nuts, like walnuts and almonds, among others, are common allergens often associated with severe life-threatening reactions like anaphylaxis. Hmm. Nut allergies occur when your immune system overreacts to the mm. protein in these nuts. Wow. That's amazing. Yes. That's amazing. You want to finish that section or you want me to go? It doesn't matter. All right, I'll quickly. According to the American College of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology, Immunology, tree nuts are among the eight most common food mm. allergens affecting children, especially children. We know about peanuts. Peanuts. And Ooh. Yes. While it's easy to avoid nuts themselves, nuts are often present in what? Most foods. Yeah. So you should carefully go through the ingredient list of products that you're not sh sure about. Because mm. the thing is, though, with even this peanut allergy, you could be in a room eating your peanut, a child walks in, and they have a reaction. Yeah. That is so serious how peanut allergy is. Just yeah the little microscopic peanut mm. getting in the atmosphere mm. can you know cause something? your allergy. That's, that's true. I have a guy that used to come by my store, a very good church brother, and he he would, he, I used to sell nuts at my shop, and I'd sell the almonds, the walnuts, the pecans, and he would have to look on the back of that package to see if it was processed in a plant, a plant that had peanuts. That's how yes. allergic and definitely allergic he was to peanuts. Yes. He said, because if it was processed in a plant that had peanuts, I can't buy it. Because on that belt, if that conveyor belt, they had passed the peanut products on it, and even if they had cleaned it off, there's mm. still some microscopic stuff that can cause trigger allergies. It's crazy. That's deep. That's so deep. That is so deep. Wow. Let's continue. 
So cross-contamination can also occur, like we've been talking just now about it, when a certain food is prepared or packed in the same place, as we said just now, as nuts. So that said, an allergy to one type of nut doesn't directly qualify as a nut allergy to a different kind of nut. Thank you so much for your love. Thank you. You okay. should always monitor your intake to be sure what kind of nuts cause your allergy. And I have the gluten-free nut thing up there, the gluten-free up there because so many of us are gluten-free today. And you've got to be certain. You've got to be certain. But we're going to get to the gluten in a minute, you know. But here's some of the signs. Go through them, Michelle. I mean, there's so many. That looks like my little oh, grandma. Wow. I'm going to put this picture up there, but I didn't get from mama and daddy. He is just messed up from all the allergies. Okay. Oh, oh some here are some of the signs. Swollen lips, skin rash, hives on the skin, runny nose. So that's itchy. You eat the food and you start having sneezing and runny nose, abdominal pain. That's a severe one to me. That mm -hmm. abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, tingling sensation in the mouth or throat. That's the one I'm scary or feeling of tightness in the throat. That's the one. Once you start getting tight in the, the throat, that's very dangerous. Very the dangerous. Penis, the penis give me pain in my stomach. It the gives penis. me pain. I get abdominal pain like crazy. And I never had that problem. I'm like, come on, I love peanuts. <laughs> okay. But nevertheless, no, I don't eat it that much, but you know. So yeah. common nuts that cause allergies would be pecans, cashews, almonds, Brazil nuts, chestnuts, hazelnuts, macadamia, pistachio, hickory nuts, and walnuts. Just got a call from a lady yeah, who was nuts. shopping. Almost all nuts. Marley, that's all, that that's it? All, it has all nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I just got a call. I was, I was here, I think it was yesterday or the day before. I got a call from the ABC, our local Adventist book center where you can purchase your food items. And the call was, Ms. McKinney, there's someone here. She's allergic to nuts. What could she replace it with? I said, why don't she just do some sunflower seeds? Not, yes. Yeah, I said something. She's like, yes. oh, thank you. Yes. You know, are you allergic to all nuts? She said, no, she gave me the list. I said, well, then you can do sesame, sunflower. But in this yes. present dish, you realize that people who are allergic to peanuts are allergic to sunflower, sesame too. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. You know, so it's crazy. So that's all nuts. Yeah. No more, no more nuts, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah. So did you do the other side about the seeds? Okay, we're doing seeds now. Seeds mm -hmm. like sesame and sunflower seeds. Eating seeds can also result in an allergic reactions mm -hmm. in sensitive individuals. The most common known seed allergy is sesame seeds. Mm. Research also shows that those with sesame allergies are also often allergic to peanuts and other tree nuts like coconut. Right. Like right. coconut. That's a, mm. Yeah, that's another allergen, the coconut too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So common signs would be itching and hives and rash, nasal congestion. You know, that's, I, I mean, I'm having all of these symptoms. This is crazy. That's why I'm so passionate about this topic. Because yeah. I'm like, Michelle, we need to cover this topic because other people are suffering like I am. Swelling in the lips, the mouth, the throat, around the eyes, wheezing, shortness of breath, nausea or vomiting, dizziness, abdominal pain and discomfort and dizziness again for whatever reason, because somebody says busy, right? But we definitely have these symptoms, um, yes. allergic reactions, allergic reactions, sorry, to sesame. Can you imagine the sesame seeds? I know. Sesame is so good, it's high in calcium, right? It's so high, yeah. How about mustard seed is another allergen that even though rare, can be more severe than, than that of sesame seeds. Other seeds that may also result in allergies include sunflower seeds and poppy seeds mm. um with the mustard seed i could see why and um but the thing is people a lot of people will probably consume mustard during the summertime mm. at the barbecue mm. and they have it mustard on their hot dogs or whatever and then they have an allergic reaction and don't know where it's coming from it that's could weird be because i i know i'll be honest with you only because of this research i'm now learning that people are allergic to mustard i'm just like long yeah i know, you know i know yeah, yeah. What about the um the poppy seeds too? I can probably see yeah, poppy seeds. I'm sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what about fish and tuna and salmon and shrimp? That favorite Bahamian food? Those favorite Bahamian foods? Oh, we <laughs> love this fish. Listen, I don't eat meat. I just eat fish. But fish has a I face. Know. It's a meat. It and it has a mouth and it has babies. <laughs> they don't see it as meat. They see it as a fish. It's fish. 
I don't eat oh. fish, Marlene. I don't eat meat. I, I hear that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so while most people don't have a problem digesting fish, there are some who are allergic to it. The symptoms of a fish allergy can range from mild hives, itching and swelling to life-threatening, trouble breathing, throat swelling, and drop in pressure. That was the problem my friend was experiencing. So when the ambulance came, I know he, he don't mind me sharing. When the ambulance came, they were like, he looks fine. I mean, of mm -hmm. course, I had already given him charcoal. He was feeling a little better. But yeah. that pressure, I checked the pressure, and I was like, uh-uh. Mm -mm. And it was dropping. I said, uh-uh. Mm -mm. And I kept saying, I shake my head. I said, Lord, what do we do? And he said, he made the decision, call the ambulance. I was like, thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. You know, call the ambulance. And I was like, uh-uh. The same oh, working. The same, the same happening. You know, so that was the problem he was experiencing. Um, Because once he got there, and he was on the drip, really, oh. he didn't have any more experiences of vomiting and diarrhea. So the charcoal had done its job of yeah. helping with that, but that pressure won't come back oh, up. No. Pulse was very low. What should have been 60 was at 40. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the ambulance, that they looked at each other, and I, so I looked too, and I was like, you got to go. You yeah, know? So yeah, it's yeah. amazing that we would even talk about this topic, and it was just a few just a few short weeks ago that I would have the experience of helping someone. Yeah. I've never had that experience, and that was Barracuda. In the yeah. Bahamas, we love Barracuda. Bahamian, stop eating this junk. I'm talking to you today, Bahamians. We need to stop. Yeah. We need to stop eating it. That's, I mean, come yeah. on. It's so simple. So if you think you may have an allergic reaction to fish, see, it's important to see an allergist to be tested, and it's important to go to the hospital because you may need to be on a drip. Okay. Yeah. What about there are two types of fish allergies. The one, first one is IgE-mediated and non-IgE-mediated. So the IgE-mediated reaction happens when your body produces antibodies called immunoglobulins in response to a protein in the fish. These reactions are usually mediated by the immune system and can be severe. However, non-IgE-mediated reactions don't involve the production of these IgE antibodies. They're often delayed. And the symptoms are typically less severe than IgE-mediated reactions. So it's when those antibodies, those immunoglobulins are produced, that's where that's a severe reaction with that protein. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. scary stuff. Wow. It's very so then there's, yeah, then there's shellfish and... There again, it's a scavenger. Uh, we I really know. Don't even be eating it. These oh. are like roaches to the bottom of the sea. Come on, think about See, what you're eating. Bottom cleaners. Right? They're bottom cleaners. And we should stay away from them because the Bible tells us we should stay away from them. For those of us who are Bible-believing people, you go yeah. on and read. It says those things that have fish, fish that have what? Fins and scales. They have neither. Yeah. We shouldn't even have to be covering this because nobody should be eating the junk. They but, should know that. It's clean up the bottom of the sea. Decayed yeah. matter. It feeds on dead and decayed matter. Where would you, how does it bring life to you? Anything that feeds on dead and decayed matter. Mm -mm. It says most people love seafood, but what they may not realize is that shellfish is one of the most common. It is mm. one of the most common food allergens. Even trace amounts of shellfish can cause a serious reaction mm. um, for those with a shellfish allergy. And the risk may even be higher if you have asthma and allergic reactions to small amounts of the shellfish, a strong family history of allergy, or a previous history of food, um, anaphylactic, however you want to say that word. <laughs> All right. Lapsed. Well, what about even, I think they do contain some mercury too, no? Of course. Of course. Yes. Yeah, so it's double course. whammy. Yeah, of course. Now, here are some of the signs of food allergies in shellfish. Symptoms of a shellfish allergy can vary from person to person, but usually include the hives, the itching, swelling, difficulty in breathing, and in severe cases, anaphylaxis. If you have a shellfish allergy, it is important to always carry an EpiPen or epinephrine auto-injection with you in case of accidental exposure you want mm -hmm. and you know these epipins are not cheap they're expensive and you need to be carrying one at all times if you know you have this kind of allergy because this is you can die you can die wow wow, wow. so there are two types of shellfish we have the 
crustaceans and we have the mol mollusk. However you want to say it, mol mollusks, mollusk. Yeah. So the crustacean would be the crab, the lobster, the shrimp, and the prawns. And the, the mollusk or the bivalves, such as the clams, oysters, mussels, scallops, snails, come on, people, octopus, squid, and abalone. Like nuts and seeds, if you have an allergic to, if you have if you're allergic reaction to one of the type of shellfish, you could easily consume other types of shellfish. However, some people with shellfish allergies will have to avoid all types. And honestly, I think so. we avoid all. Well, we well. recommend stay away from them. They're not good. They're not giving your body anything good. Okay. What about now we're going to talk about wheat allergy, wheat found in breads, pastas, cereals, and many other foods. Wheat is a common grain consumed worldwide. It's also present in most foods you're likely you're like to find in the grocery store. However, for anyone with wheat allergy, this grain can cause various side effects. A mm. wheat allergy occurs when the body produces antibodies against the protein you hear that again it's always that protein mm. mainly gluten in wheat mm. causing allergic reactions and i find mm. marlene we as um said the adventists we eat a lot of gluten we used yes, to we make do. gluten and if you think about it when you make gluten you're dividing or you are eliminating the fiber yeah the fiber yeah. which is essential and you're making this pure protein, and I can see why it will trigger more an allergic it, reaction. It tastes body. good, though. <laughs> I remember what? when I remember Michelle when we were at Lord Book Academy. I don't remember who the chef was. I I think I'm trying to remember. Anyway, we'd go to the cafeteria because you know, as a teacher at Lord Book, we didn't have time to cook, so we would go to the cafeteria for lunch. Listen. That young lady used to make some gluten steaks. It was the best I've ever had. Ever, <laughs> yeah. and it would be it would be gluten steaks and it would be deep fat fried with yeast. Oh, it was oh. divine. But over the years, over the time, I realized that my stomach couldn't take it. Take it, and, yeah. and now I can't have it at all. I, yeah. I make the best gluten roast in the world. I think I have shared the recipe with everybody. It's on my website, but I can't have it. it as soon as I swallow, my stomach just starts to pain. I can't explain. Hey. Okay. I get abdominal pain like crazy. So, yeah, I love it. But I can't. It's not. Huh? It's, it's, it really destroys those villi in your intestines. It's too much. It is. It, and people are not connecting to their body. So, if people start connect, connecting and they're having severe abdominal pain, and sometimes they have muscle pain in their arms, their body aches severely. And if they start putting the connection is when they eat wheat. A lot of times is when they eat the wheat. Yeah. It causes all so, these reactions. Let's take a moment and continue to welcome you who are just joining us. I'm Marlene Yay. McKinney from Something Better. And we have my sister friend, Michelle. I just wanted us to go to our comments right quick. We have um, watching in Rwanda, Florence. She says, I am in Rwanda, East Africa. Happy Sabbath. Happy then Persephone Sabbath. says she's allergic to crab, shellfish. I get itching and swelling in the lips and face and the tongue. Mm. God's way of saving you, girl. Hallelujah. Um, good topic for today. Thank you. That's uh, patience. You. Eugenie, good morning. Happy Sabbath to you, too. Happy Thank you Sabbath. for joining. Please continue to share the live with your friends and family. We do need you. We do. Um, Emmanuel oh, I want you to repeat. The signs yeah. of the food allergies. Signs oh, chin, oh. runny nose, lip, hives, hives mm -hmm. and um, anaphylactic throat, scratchy throat, swelling in the throat or scratching, and then uh, could be anaphylactic shock. Monica said, I learned a couple of years ago that peanuts are not nuts, but they're a legume. It is. It's a legume. It is a legume. It is. It is and I believe that's why sometimes too it can because if you're eating raw peanut, you're not supposed to eat raw peanut technically because it's not, it needs to be cooked. Mm -hmm. And it can cause a lot of allergic reaction because anything that grows close to the ground, mm -hmm. peanuts, strawberries, in order for them, mm -hmm. they're heavily sprayed with pesticides because they're being attacked. So you'll find the farmers 
heavily spray them with herbicides, fungicides, because they're close, but there's more moisture. They spray them with herbicide, pesticides, fungicides. So they are mm. huge, heavily sprayed. They end up causing a lot of allergic reactions. Wow. I don't want no more peanuts. Hallelujah. <laughs> thank you so much, Levinson. He says, thank you, ladies, for your assistance. John Clark, how you doing? Good morning. Morning. Princess, yeah. Princess Anne Maria Knowles, good morning. Blessings to you, too. Thank you so much for joining, everyone. Denatha says, two types of fish allergies. I well understand now. Yes, my dear? I, do. I love I love how you teach these lessons. Musica. Thank you so much. Oh boy, listen, listen. David said wheat is a favorite food. I'm telling you, man. It's <laughs> my it's so popular. It yeah. is in everything: breads, biscuit, cookies, cakes, uh, gravy. Oh hey, wow! This one says I grow the wheat, but I don't know the importance of wheat. Oh, oh who you grows grow wheat? wheat? That's cool, David. I wow. know, but you he don't have an allergy, which is good. You don't oh, have an allergy. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Princess. How you doing? Thank you so much. This is a great topic. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing our live on your platforms, wherever you may be. Take that Thank link, press and copy, send it to your WhatsApp, send it to your Facebook, send it to your Instagram, wherever you can, however you can. Thank you, Joelle, for joining us from Rwanda. Thank you so much. Wheat is a favorite food. It really is. To me, it's a favorite food. But um, I, I think more and more... Um, because of what's going on in Ukraine, it's actually becoming a food that is getting scarce. Um, mm -hmm. Just this week, Italy, Italy put out that they're short of wheat. Mm -hmm. So pasta is on the decline. So we'll have to find alternatives because it's becoming short on a short supplies because of what's going on with the war. Um, what's interesting is that um, you go to the stores now what used to be five dollars a pound, a five pound bag is now ten dollars, and that's due to the shortage. It's due to the shortage. Yes, yeah, it's over it's just ten dollars a five pound bag now for, for wheat flour. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. 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 I've stopped using it. I use the gluten-free versions, um, preferably for me, as I you know try to identify the foods that are giving me problems. Um, yes. but it's and swelling, these are signs that you may have allergies to wheat. Yes. And a lot of the allergies, they, they look at, the symptoms come the same. Hives hey. and splash and nose congestion and itching and swelling uh, in the throat, mouth, breathing difficulties, indigestion, bloating, yes. gas, discomfort, abdominal hey, cramps. The same. Very much the same. Yeah, a lot of it is the same. Yeah, a lot of it is the same. All right. So common foods with wheat protein includes the following. Go ahead, Marley. Bread comes, bran. Bulgur, einkorn, couscous, durum, durum flour, farina. There's just so much more. Yes. I'm now seeing who that princess is. Thank you, princess. <laughs> princess, I see you. I see she's I caught your live this morning. Good morning. Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> All right. Beautiful. Thank you for being a part of our audience. Thank you for, for sharing it. Appreciate it. So all these are different types of wheat. Um that we can use for cereal, for whatever. What about eggs, that uh, favorite food of ours? It's loaded in cholesterol. I'm bashing all the foods today, guys. I'm not bashing. <laughs> <laughs> but this is also a common allergy, eh, Marlene, the egg allergy. Yeah. I know people with vertigo and um, yeah. itching and swelling. They can't explain what's the problem. And it's really um, eggs. Eggs are a common allergen. And often used in baking, of course, and they can yeah. be found in so many foods that we really love, but it does lead to allergies. All right. Then we have, of course, the dairy products and dairy, dairy products. products. It's another common allergen, and many people are allergic to dairy products, mm -hmm. such as the milk, cheese, yogurt. Mm -hmm. And this is due to the presence of the protein casein. Wow. And some vegetarian cheese has casein, so you have to be careful too. And mm -hmm. it's a protein, this protein that triggers it. Dairy mm -hmm. allergies can cause a variety of symptoms, including gastrointestinal distress, skin reactions, and respiratory problems. If wow. you have a dairy allergy, it's important to avoid all dairy products, 
and read the labels carefully to make sure that you are not accidentally consuming dairy. Mm. Mm. All right. And then we have the mustard. Like we said earlier, most people are familiar with common food allergies like peanuts and gluten and dairy, but most of us don't know anything about the fact that we are allergic to mustard. And mustard is a member of the cabbage family and is related to both horseradish and wasabi. It's used as a condiment on our sandwiches, as we know, hot dogs specifically, you know, and yeah. it is an allergen, um, uh, and uh, it, it creates allergies, okay? Yeah. Well, how do we diagnose food allergies? How do you go about deciding, making sure? I, I was told, my aunt said she spent $1,200 for her blood test. Very she said, by the time they were finished mining, it didn't even help me. <laughs> <laughs> didn't even help me. I said, I want to do a food allergy test. She says, $1,200. It didn't even Help. Yeah, well, get that test, you know. Yeah. So you can do a skin prick test. Yeah. Um, it's a common and quickest way to test for multiple food allergies at once. To perform this test, of course, you have to go to a doctor or an yeah. allergist. And you know, it's very simple, there's nothing hard about it. Um, and look at that. I love this. It says they can the doctor or the allergist will put a drop containing a specific food allergen on the back of your hand. They did a mm. YouTube prank for one of the people I took with me. And yes. the site looks like when you got mosquito bites. Look at it. Look at, look at, look at that. that. Yeah, I, I, I remember I remember when I was a YouTube prank, one of the persons there had the same test done. Um, yeah. If an allergic patch develops on the skin, the test is considered positive for the specific allergen. However, if the test is negative, you're likely not to, you're likely not allergic to that particular um, allergen. Yeah, I remember. I don't remember who it was, but I remember somebody in my group got that test done, and they could see the foods that they were allergic to. That was pretty, pretty neat. Right. You can also do food allergy blood testing. Besides the skin pricking test, blood testing is another effective method used to diagnose food allergies. The test is used to measure a substance known as, again, the immunoglobulin E in the blood. IgE is an antibody that the body produces, but higher than normal amount means that you do have allergies. So this mm. test could be, however, take a longer, maybe a week or more before the results are out. You're not going to get the immediate results. Naturally, they have to send it to the lab, but it shows. Mm. Next, mm. Marlene, you're going to do the oral, Let me have the, the oral like food. Yeah, I like this one too. This is probably, you know, to be honest, this is highly accurate diagnostic test for food allergies. This test can, however, cause severe reactions. So if you're doing it, you should be done in a professional environment, of course, with the equipment ready to save your life, okay? Because here, one feeds on the suspected food in measured amounts or measured doses, starting with small amounts, increasing it uh, along the way to see what the reaction will look like. So if you have no symptoms by the end of the procedure, your doctor will rule it out. If there's a reaction, the doctor discusses with you further on how to go about it. Um, and this test can sometimes be done in people with a known allergy to see whether or not they've outgrown it. Um, that's a great yes. way of doing it too. Yes. But sometimes we outgrow. Sometimes we outgrow. Yes, but as we get older, there again, sometimes things take place. Like me, I'm getting older, so I'm having the allergies now, which is crazy. You know, almost yeah. feel like a kid. <laughs> So what about the treatment for food allergies? Um, number one or A is avoidance diet. Or is this the elimination they're talking about? While some allergies may improve with time overall, most food allergies have no cure. And for this, the only way is to avoid whatever food you could be allergic to. So basically eliminate it from your diet. It's, so, it's tough though, you know, because people, they, they fall in love with these foods. They have an affair with these foods. And it's tough. It's tough to talk about, like, I'm not going to have that food. You mean I can't have it anymore? Well, it's either that or you die. I don't have a reaction. <laughs> you know, you got to choose. Then we have medication. As medication, so, um, as mentioned, sorry, allergies have no cure. However, al active allergic reactions can be relieved with various medications like antihistamines and corticosteroids and epi. epi um, nephrine, the, the needle, or depending on the severity, antihistamines reduces what? Itching and congestion. The antihistamines would be like the, 
Oh, I just mentioned one this morning. What was it? This morning? Um, the antihistamine, um, but I will mention, but you know, there, there are many of them on the market over the counter, you know, corticosteroids, swelling, huh? Yeah. Benadryl. Benadryl. Yeah. Benadryl. They're very, you know, I know my cousin Shelly, she has to have it because she said sometimes she goes to eat out and you don't know what you're going to come in contact with and having an allergic reaction. Yeah. The epi, epinephrine life-saving medication. My son Vincent actually used to create, he worked for a factory that created those pins, those needles. Yeah. He would, come, you know, bring them together. Um, it is always important to have these emergency medications at home, including the epinephrine auto injector. And I always yeah. say it's always yeah. good to have at home some charcoal, activated charcoal. Charcoal, charcoal yeah. is my go-to. You Thank can't you. go wrong. You just can't go wrong. Yeah. So here are some tips for dealing with food allergies. More imp most important is to read food labels carefully. Some allergens may contain unfamiliar names, so always seek clarification if needs be. Cook your own meals from scratch. When eating out, communicate with the restaurant staff so that they can watch out for cross-contamination. Avoid treats along the way or treats. Avoid unlabeled or unpacked foods. Master your symptoms so you can recognize them early. So be in tune with your body. So at least you start feeling that runny nose after you eat or your heart racing, you're, you're having difficulty breathing. You know something is not right and know how to use that EpiPen. Yeah. You better. You, you better. Yeah. You know. Marlene, okay. I had to use one in an emergency for the first time, and I had never used it. And I literally had to pray, but I just, all I used, I didn't like I'm doing an injection. But that mm -hmm. was the most stressful experience I had. The young man was covered in hives, difficulty breathing. And what did he, what did he eat? We don't know. Wow. He, he's saying that whenever it, the, the, the meal was pasta, the meal was mm -hmm. pasta. However, he was having episodes wherever his body gets overheated. He was playing basketball after he at, at the meal. So okay. he was playing basketball after and his body just becomes super hot, breaks out in hives all over. And then he's having, he can't breathe. Wow. So I did the EpiPen and called wow. 911. And did the, what, what was the reaction with the EpiPen? Because I've never used one. Oh, immediately. He, he, he got better. He felt better Praise immediately. God. Praise immediately. God. It he worked. He started feeling better. So by Praise the time God. the 911, by the time they came, they were like, we did the right thing. They said, that's good. That's what they would have done anyway. So... I took care of things, but Praise God. I didn't like I didn't like it because I'm not. A I know, physician. I know. I can imagine. I could just I imagine. I could just imagine. So if you end up um, needing to go to the ER, like Michelle's young man, he needed to be the you know, ambulance was called. So when would you have signs? To, when when would you determine? For my friend, we checked his pressure. The pressure went down. So here are some other signs. You may have difficulty breathing. The throat swelling that constricts the airways, your chest tightening, hives throughout the body, burning and tingling sensations on the hands, the feet, the lips, and the mouth. So this may be a sign, an indication that you should yes. head to the emergency room. Yes, yes. Final thoughts. Food allergies can be life-threatening, and it's important to recognize the signs and symptoms some common signs again include hives, swelling of the lips or tongue, vomiting, and difficulty breathing. Hmm. We're gonna end with oh, there are two Psalms, Mari. I could do one and then mm -hmm. Psalm 34, verse 4 says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Man. I love that text, you know. I love it. Because I'm telling you guys. I had to say, I sought the Lord when I was going through my crazy allergies. I was like, Lord, help me, Jesus. <laughs> yes. Yes. 
Okay. I see a comment saying, I don't know mustard. We'll try and find a photo for you. And then the next text, our final text, just to bring you hope for those of us who may be suffering yes. this morning or today or tonight, whenever you choose to listen to this podcast, you may be suffering. You don't have to suffer in silence. You don't have to suffer alone. If you can't find someone to talk to, you talk to God. He says, for he knows, we know that all, all those who love God, you must remember this is written in another version. So <laughs> yeah. Romans 8, 28 says, for we know that all things, right, work together for good to them that love the Lord and that are called according to his purpose. Sorry for that strange version this morning. But God, <laughs> is, God definitely, he definitely knows what he's doing and yeah. he knows what's best for us. And he yeah. knows that when he allows these things to happen, it's either one is to save us or because he's trying to get our attention or three i mean there's so many reasons why things happen right it's not just one yeah. ever never one thing never one reason but definitely you want to just use that opportunity to cry out to him i cried i was like lord something's happening and i don't know what's going on and i was so grateful as i got to this place where i'm at now and i'm able to identify wait a second it is what i'm eating I'm allergic to some things all of a sudden, but nevertheless, God is good. Let's take those comments now. I don't know if we have a picture we can show the person of mustard. Cynthia says, I don't know mustard. I don't know what is mustard. It's usually it's used as a um, um, a topping on sandwiches and hot dogs, yellow, kind of sharp taste. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Alliance. Alliance is very important. Monica. Oh, really? She said there's a trigger, trigger Tommy, trick Tommy. How do you say that word? Trigger Tommy. Trigger Tommy. I said it right. Specialist right. here. Really? Who does good allergy testing? Beautiful. I never knew that. Awesome. Very good to know. Hi, Miss Veronica. Hi. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath to you and your grandson and to all of you. Yes. Um, here in Florida. And I pray you're having an awesome, awesome morning. Well, Michelle, anything else on food allergies that you can think of that may help to convince or to help persons to understand what they may be suffering from? Uh, I, I should mention you can do an elimination diet yeah. in that what you're going to do is like strip down to foods that are not known allergies. And then you could then slowly add back a couple of days, you add one food at a time back watch your body for a couple of days see if you had a reaction and then you can then go on to so say you have a couple of foods that you're thinking so say it's wheat you put the wheat taste the wheat see how your body respond for two days then you put in another food and another food and you keep doing that and then you can slowly bring back the foods that are good for you and then the ones that oh wow i had a severe reaction you know that's that's how that's how so you can do, go by the process of elimination so you go to that just <laughs> out all the foods that are allergens i did it the other day with peanuts as soon as i ate the peanut butter my mouth broke out inside wow. a little itchy. Wow. So I, I know i'm like okay so i got that one down back you know so yeah. i did it with peanut butter and then you could go on a fast so you could go on a fast for a few days of course yes. you want to do that with the help of your somebody because Somebody. you know fasting could be kind yeah. of a medical tricky. professional yeah so if you can if you have somebody your doctor you can you know your advisor do a two to three day fast and you bring the foods back one at a time that's a great way of also knowing yeah. what you're allergic to yeah and sometimes we need to fast to get rid of all the toxins in our yeah, system anyway. yeah and when i think of allergies i think about the fact that the foods are highly processed they have a lot of pesticides and stuff junk in them there's so much in the food they're not clean especially if you didn't grow the food yourself so it's just you just your body is just having these allergic reaction to all this and you know antigens foreign foods processed foods chemicals mm -hmm. not eating pure food anymore it's hard to find pure food mm -hmm. Very hard, very difficult. Hard. Yep, very difficult. Well, 
Thank you so much for joining us today. You have made our experience so much more exciting. Thank you to those who sent all the love hearts, Veronica, Miss Christie, in the Philippines, and all of you. I can't see all the names because it doesn't allow us to see all the names who send the likes and the love. But we thank you for being a part of our family. We thank you. And thank continue you. to share because there is someone out there who may be having some allergies and they just don't realize that they're having an allergic reaction and they're spending lots of money at the doctor's office trying to figure out what's wrong with their arm. And it could very well just be, it's a food that they're eating that's triggering the um, reaction that they're having. So yeah, there you go. So thank you too, Linda. Thank you. I have one last thing. What better way you see when Jesus was healing on the Sabbath, what happened, the Pharisees and the scribes, they criticized him. What better way to spend the Sabbath? Somebody who's going through allergies, who's, like you said, spending all that money and it's what they're eating and we can help somebody today. If it's one person who's gonna walk away with this, from this, it's a blessing. Yeah. The song says, if I can help somebody, somebody. as I travel along, then my living will not be in vain. So God bless you all. Thank you God again. You. And we hope to see you again next week, Saturday morning. Yes. We'll put a time on us and what time we'll be out. I thought Michelle, I prefer this time. 8.30 is a real push, you know? 8.30 is a real push. But, um, you know, sometimes we have to do stuff at church, Marley. So yeah, but can. sometimes we have to do stuff at church. That's true. So we have to leave it open. We'll just yeah. let you know, um, you know, hopefully we'll be on time as normal. Around 8, 30, 9 o'clock, that's the time, normal time for us to go on live. Thank you, Jan. She says, very enlightening. Thank you so much. Each and every one of you, God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the day, the rest of the evening. Miss Christy there in the Philippines and wherever you may be in the world, we put so God's much. richest blessings on each and every one of you. Until then. Bye.